AI is reshaping our world. We do a lot of fun demos on this show in our AI connection segment, looking at tools like ChatGPT and Perplexity. But it's not that simple for a lot of industries. It's not as easy as just teaching your team how to use a new tool. It gets very complex very quickly. Today on the show, we have an expert who's going to talk about an AI for manufacturing roadmap. Expert Connections starts now. Connections. I'm your host, Julie Holton Smith. Today on the show, we are exploring how the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan is tackling this challenge head on with an ambitious new initiative, a roadmap on AI for manufacturing. Our guest expert today, Jennifer Wengler, is the Vice President of Technology at the Right Place in Grand Rapids. She is also the Director of the Technology Council of West Michigan. And Jen, you now also host your own podcast called Meet Her, dedicated to the incredible women who are leading technology companies. Definitely a, a must listen to, must watch for those who are interested in technology and women. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Julie, for having me. Great to be on. Oh, I always love having you, Jen, and recently talked with you about Tech Week GR. For, so for those who are interested, check out that video, hear all about what is happening in Grand Rapids, Michigan, related to technology. Jen, a lot of your work is really focusing on building Grand Rapids into a tech hub, really highlighting the tech hub that already is Grand Rapids as you work to grow it. Part of this is a... Uh, 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 a roadmap that you recently launched called AI for Manufacturing. Tell us about this roadmap. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll start with, um, you know, the basic landscape of, of West Michigan. Um, and so 25% of our economy still resides in manufacturing and about 6% in tech. And so our plan over the long haul is to increase that tech front footprint, um, but keep that vibrant manufacturing space. So what we do really well here in Michigan is we make things. So how can we complement that with tech? And AI provides an opportunity for us to do that, to continue to make things, but to enhance the speed and the efficiency of by way we do that. And so AI is going to hopefully be one of the tools in the toolbox that we're going to use. Okay, you say you said the two magic words, speed and efficiency. <laughs> yes, uh, I yeah. think most businesses across every sector would like to, you know, draw in on that. Can you talk about the vision behind this AI adoption, specifically in manufacturing for the region? Yeah, absolutely. So we're always trying to keep our um, foot on the pedal of, you know, what is going to help our companies be the most competitive. And so over the last year, especially, what our manufacturers have heard is that their clients, their customers are looking for them to be better, faster, more efficient, and that they're looking at AI as a way to do that. But there's so much confusion around, you know, how do we do that? Where do we dip our toe in? Okay, look, there are two things that we know, right? That Everybody is a novice when it comes to AI. Even if you are kind of an expert, you're still a bit of a novice in that there are going to be some early adapters. And those early adapters are going to be in tech and in professional services and, and communications. Manufacturing is, is more difficult because of the operations and the complexity of it. So helping our manufacturers learn about best practices and come together and find easy ways to adapt AI is truly what the AI roadmap is about. And doing that under certain personas will be the best path forward. Yeah. And certainly in Michigan, Jen, it's, you know, like personally, I've just always had this feeling because of the way we've been impacted by the auto industry for better and for worse at times throughout our state 
This is so important to be able to embrace this technology early and to help our businesses and our workers be able to embrace this and use it to the full potential, as you mentioned, as a tool in our toolbox. So you've identified um, through this AI roadmap, this AI for manufacturing roadmap, you've identified three key areas of focus. Can you tell us about these three areas first, and then maybe we'll walk through them. Yeah, thanks, Julie. That's a great question. Uh, so when we um, started out with this AI roadmap, we wanted to focus on certain areas that our manufacturers could get started. And these were the areas that we thought would be the easiest for them to be able to dip their toe. And the first one is, is you know, I'm sure that you hear all the time, and that really is upskilling and reskilling your talent. Um, so one of the things that I heard when I was presenting in Boston is um, we had a, a gentleman from Harvard that did um, some research around this. And so what he's finding is that while our employers are looking for talent to have AI and AI skills and expertise, uh, our existing talent isn't coming out of college with that. Our universities aren't um, training appropriately. And so not only our students that are coming out don't have those skills, but the current workforce doesn't have that. So certainly there's going to have to be a measure of upskilling, right? Retraining our workforce on AI and getting them up to speed, um, as well as um, digging deep into our universities and um, helping them, shepherding them with the um, private community to talk about what types of skills and things our companies are in need of for our students coming out. Yeah, absolutely. I do a lot of work at Michigan State University over in East Lansing here and similar conversations happening here of how do we connect the students who are learning right now and 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 getting them connected into the companies that have needs and really making sure that gap is, is bridged. But also, yeah. as you mentioned, for those workers who already exist in the workforce, identifying what skills they need. So absolutely fascinating, of course, as, as one of the key areas you're looking at. Another yeah. one is the adoption of technology and integration. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah. Well, and I, and I talked earlier, I'm not sure if it was on this or another podcast that we did, but I talked about the fact that there will be early adapters, right? And those will be in industries like, you know, communications, professional services, tech. Uh, it will be much harder in industries like manufacturing because of the complexity of operations and the things that they need to, to consider uh, when adapting AI. But it's also the return on investment. I am always floored at um, when you go and you um, talk to a technology company and they're launching a new AI platform for something. Um, at, in, you ask the question around, okay, but what's the return on investment for, for the company to be able to spend the money to bring in AI? And there's they haven't done as much research as they need to around that particular component. So in, with our manufacturers, especially our small to medium ones, the adoption is going to take a little longer because they have to see that return on investment before, before they can go forward. Yeah, the return, Jen, and you also write in a blog, which I will link to so those watching can get more information on this. You also write in your blog about um, the adoption without interrupting the current yeah. operations, you know, and that is so key. We see a lot yeah. of startups that are, you know, just starting, of course, you know, and they're and they're starting their business, their technology focused business with with AI or yeah. you know with technology. And that's different because they're not having to stop something that's already in process without AI, for instance. And, and so, you know, just as you said, very complex. Okay, so and your third area of focus that in this AI for manufacturing roadmap is the infrastructure development. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, I talk a little bit in the blog about this J curve, right? So with any new technology, there's this initial excitement. And then we realize that we don't necessarily have the infrastructure 
in the data sets, especially with AI, because you need really strong data sets. You need to be able to train your models in order to get the best information out. So we're certainly a little bit behind in that. So what you're gonna see is we've seen this initial excitement we're going to see a little bit of a drop. And then once we get to that place where we're building out the infrastructure and the data sets and the things that we need, then you'll see this spike and it'll kind of go back up. You know, so interesting too, as you talk about those data sets, I just did an interview with two women focusing on go-to-market strategies for startups. And one of the things that we talked about, we kind of laughed about a little bit, but on a serious note, AI also can't create those data sets for you. You know, I think right. there's this misconception at times that, oh, AI just knows all the things and it needs to train on actual data. We can't just create that out of nothing. And so, yes, mm -hmm. that process takes time, Jen. Um, yeah. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you're noticing um, as you work with businesses in adopting some of this? Yeah, what, one of the things that I, that I mentioned all the time that we don't necessarily think about is there is a, a diversity and inclusion part of this uh, AI journey that um, oftentimes that we forget. So women specifically, tend not to tinker around with AI as much as their male counterpart. And so the data that's going in is a bit skewed. Um, and so because of that, number one, uh, women will be left behind, right? And so how do we get your, your sisters, your mothers, your aunts into AI and playing around with that? So there's a certain level of comfort um, and uh, exposure to that particular tool. It's just a tool in the toolbox, right? Um, so that that is that will be crucial for us in the coming months as an economy, as an ecosystem that we all want to build and grow together in the most uh, inclusive way that we can. And so that's been a huge, um, a huge vocal point and um, point for me hitting on in the last few months. Yeah, I you know, this is fascinating. I can't wait to put our heads together more on this. I, I can't wait to hear what what the right place, what you come up with in, in tackling this, because I, I did just see some numbers and I was shocked to see how few women are using AI tools, yeah. even like you said, to tinker around with, even using yeah. GPT or Gemini or Claude or other, you know, mm -hmm. simple tools to just get a feel for AI. Right. Well, so I've started to do some lunch and learns uh, just around the office. Let's just get in and look at, are you struggling with what to make for dinner or to get from here to there? Or if you're in business, let's say you're a small business owner, do you want to write a blog? Do you, are you holding interviews? Do you need to do some, some easy searching? I mean, those are all easy ways to dip your toe in there and just get comfortable with the different tools. There's a million tools out there. And so just getting started is part of it. Yes, just pick one. I'm excited mm -hmm. to share that I will have Ethan King on the show soon. So I'll link to that. I'll come back into this episode and link to that. Ethan actually recently presented in Grand Rapids um, as part of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. Ph cool. Phenomenal event where he walked through various prompts and how to integrate AI into whether it's your everyday life or your business workflow, administrative yeah communication, as you mentioned earlier. So, um, but I love this focus that you have too on, on women and getting women so that they're not left behind. Jen, yeah. I also wonder too about, um, as we, as we look at some of the inclusivity, the age demographics, and I know there are times when I think, oh my gosh, another tool to learn. And I start to feel like I'm an 80 year old woman with yeah. like, oh, you know, oh, technology, I need a kid to show me how to use this. Do you think that, you know, especially in, in manufacturing, are some of these different challenges, um, things that you see as potential obstacles? Yeah, I, you know, one of the um, one of the misconceptions that we hear all the time is AI is going to take our jobs. And that, that, you know, I think that we are starting to, to peek over that crust, but it's still definitely a concern. So I hear from my parents, you know, especially. So being able to, you know, 
put out that misconception that no AI is not going to take our jobs. It's going to free up time for us to be able to move forward and do the things that we love and be creative and innovative in ways that we couldn't do before because there just wasn't enough time, right? Um, and so I think it's just going to enhance us as humans and as as workers and and uh, professionals in whatever our whatever our journey is. Absolutely, Jen. And I was talking recently with um, with a company, the leader of a company, CEO who is a part of your technology council, and and he was talking about AI in the in the way of how can it help him make his employees' lives better? Not replace employees, but make their lives better, help them to gain more time back in the day. And I think that really encapsulates what you're describing of using AI as a tool. So one last question for you. Um, as we look ahead to the future, we look at Grand Rapids, we look at this AI for manufacturing roadmap. How do you see the community helping to contribute to this vision? Yeah, you know, I, I think that um, our our tech community has just done amazing things. Um, I host a local industry council called the Technology Council of West Michigan, and every day they're coming to me and talking about you know new technologies that they've launched, um, and sharing those with the community, especially the business community. Um, but I think that you know just coming out and getting involved in things like Tech Week, or we host, um, every month we host uh, Circle Coffees where women come together and they talk about technology and share their journeys. Just being a part of that story and coming out and sharing and meeting other people that are uh, working through these problems and offering solutions, I think will be a part of our success. Yeah, I love that. I, I have this vision of these business owners locking arms, helping other business owners, that idea of community, mm -hmm. uh, which really, when, when we're talking about AI and technology, makes that vision even stronger to know that it still takes that human side in order to move the technology forward. Absolutely. And that, you know, at the end of the day, that really is the purpose of an organization called The Right Place, right? It's shepherding the relationships between the universities, our, you know, our other industries, our manufacturing communities, our councils, shepherding that relationship so that they can come together, talk about and share the, the challenges and the struggles that they're having. And then more importantly, um, the best practices and the successes that they're seeing. It really, at the end of the day, it's about community and collaboration. Absolutely. Jen, I encourage our viewers to learn more about The Right Place and the work that you're doing there. Also, I, we will put, we'll put all the links in. Well, the link to the, the AI for Manufacturing Roadmap, Tech Week GR, all the, your, your circle, uh, coffee circle. What do you call it for your women? It's the coffee. Yeah. Coffee. So, so we have two events that we do for women. Um, Go Beyond is um, once a year. It's a full day. And so that will be in February this year, a date to come. Um, and we'll, I'll give you the link for that. And then Circle Coffees happen once a month. And you can just reach out to me. So um, put my email in there and I can get you logged into those. Excellent. Jennifer Wengler from The Right Place. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Julie. Yes, that is all for this episode of Expert Connections. We will see you over in the next video.